Welcome to Style DNA, the podcast I created to uncover the lives behind the looks of your favorite well known faces and help unveil their style DNA. As a designer, I've always been inspired by the premise that wearing the right pieces should make you feel the best version of yourself, gorgeous and confident, and that these pieces should be designed and crafted for longevity. I'm delighted to share that this episode is supported by Karen Millen, a brand that has a 42-year legacy in the world of fashion. Their commitment to affordable luxury and making investment pieces accessible has truly stood the test of time. Whether you're searching for a timeless winter coat that will serve you for years to come, or an elegant evening dress, you'll find both classic and modern designs that are perfect for refreshing your wardrobe for the season ahead. Online at karenmillan.com. Head over to my Instagram for a link to a special treat for listeners. Today, I'm going on a style journey with British luxury accessories designer Sophia Webster, who founded her eponymous label in 2012. A graduate of the London College of Fashion and the Royal College of Art, Sophia debuted her first shoe collection for spring-summer 2013, becoming internationally renowned for her unique, creative and instantly uplifting designs. Sophia was awarded the Condé Nast Footwear News Emerging Designer of the Year in 2012 and the British Fashion Award for Emerging Accessories Designer in 2013 and became the first female shoe designer to receive the prestigious British Fashion Council Vogue Fashion Fund. In 2019, Sophia was awarded an honorary doctorate in design from De Montfort University, marking her contribution to footwear design. A year after the launch of her brand, Sophia married her husband and CEO of her company, Bobby Stockley. Inevitably, Sophia's mind turned to bridal shoes, resulting in the launch of her well-loved, contemporary and conversation-starting bridal collection at a time when the available options in the market were largely classic. Sophia strategically harnessed the growth of social media's influence over the way brides planned their weddings, leading her to create for this range the hugely Instagrammable wifey for lifey souls. When Sophia fell pregnant with her first child, Bibi, she launched her mini collection that features kids' versions of her best-selling wing sandals, making her a true pioneer of the mini-me movement. One of Sophia's proudest career moments was the launch of her Extended Sizes collection in February 2020, producing her key brand styles up to a size European 46. She's the first luxury footwear brand to introduce this widely inclusive range. Congratulations. Thank you. Hello and Hi. welcome, <laughs> Sophia. I feel like I've spent the whole of last weekend with you because I was immersed in your fantastic new book. Oh my gosh, I love your shoes. It really is just the most beautifully written and very visual diary because it's only really just over 10 years that yeah. you've been in business mm -hmm. and, and yet you've created this incredible um, beautiful and highly recognisable brand. Um, was it a very cathartic process writing the book, putting it together? Come, I don't know. We, I started as a um, doing a challenge um, that I set myself on uh, New Year's Eve 2020 to um, sketch one shoe a day from my archive. So I'd obviously 2020 had been reflecting a lot. It um, gave, definitely gave me the space to... to um, to, re to reflect on the last sort of decade of, of, of what we'd been doing and just the fast um, pace of, of fashion, how it's just one thing, then the next, and the next, and you're just always working on the, the next collection. Um, and I didn't start out in fashion. I started out in art. So to me, um, that's how I approach my design. So I... I, I um, I wanted to kind of celebrate the designs from the past in, in a new way. So I thought, let me sketch um, one a day. And because um, also being having that background in art, sketching for me is the, the, the best part of the process. But when you have a business to run, it, it always, almost ends up being the thing that I don't get to spend sort of a huge amount of time doing because um, of all the other like responsibilities yeah. and pressures that you have to focus and prioritize um so yeah it was meant to be like a bit of a mindfulness um challenge like for me um and then as I started sketching each shoe 
different memories and stories would like pop into my head of when that the period of time that that she was from or um funny stories from like fashion shows or you know dramas and things like that or and um so I just started writing them all down I was gonna say did you start writing them at the same time as you were sketching them um initially no um as I started to think about maybe making the sketches into a book um and I started speaking to different literary agents I started just thinking about writing them down and um I wrote them down as I was writing them down to create like a um a deck to kind of yeah. send out yeah. um I just started writing and then I just didn't stop <laughs> just kept and then the more I wrote the more I wanted to fill in the gaps and oh well, I can't talk about this without talking about that and different things so um and then it just ended up being a memoir yeah it's a fantastic journey of at times your inspiration at times your design process and mm -hmm. visits to the factory yeah. and then at other times um I I loved all of your um London Fashion Week runway or presentation yeah. um, inspirations and how you got the the ideas into reality because your your shows are known to be incredibly creative and they they really do tell a story yeah and and so I I that book is fantastic I I oh, loved it and I've, so I've loved getting to know you through it um but today we're on a style journey and how did you decide what you were going to wear here today well these I had these trousers I think we had them someone had pulled them in for a shoot and then I tried them on I was like I'm gonna keep them <laughs> Um, so the the pink Loewe cords, just the understated little pink Loewe cords yeah. that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah and then um, I don't know. I had them. I had a white top on initially, and then I thought, like, oh, let, let me try it with this with a green top. So I like to I like to um, color block and you know put different color combinations together and stuff. Yeah, you strike me as someone who has a real love of color as I sort of yeah. cruise through your book and and your website, you know, the I love the way you put your color palettes together. Do, is that because you get inspired by specific things? I know you're inspired by butterflies. Yeah, definitely. Um I've always loved butterflies. Um I love for my um, master's collection, actually, at the Royal College of Art, I um, started really zooming into to butterfly wings. And they have these just amazing um, prints and patterns, um, almost like leopard, like very feminine sort of leopard prints, if you really zoom in. So um, ever since then, really, I've used um, butterflies a lot in my in my work and obviously they have this just amazing color inspiration from nature it's just mm. it's you know so yeah I love I love looking to them for color inspiration but I read that that there was a family connection with butterflies can you tell yeah, me about that? um so my my grandma on my dad's side she was um uh she was a holocaust survivor and she came to London as a refugee when she was eight um and she always loved butterflies. Everything was was butterflies with grandma. So, um, and it was only once she'd passed away that I went through all the letters that she, she used to write me like a little letter or note every week and send it to me. Um, and most of the notes said, oh, not a lot's gone on this week. So I thought I'd send you this little butterfly card. Or she, there, were, there was just so many notes with butterfly stickers or... Um, you know, and she would write, oh, you can never have too many butterflies. So it, it, it didn't twig really that she was the the butterfly influence until until much later after all my collections, you know, and so much had been inspired by butterflies. Um, and, and then a couple of years ago, when my auntie went through all my um, grandparents' old um, belongings, she found a pocket watch that had an inscription to... Um, uh, Herbert Cayley Webster, who was my great grand uncle, and it was quite mysterious because no one had ever heard of this of, of this man. And um, it turns out he was a explorer, and he discovered butterflies, species oh. of butterflies. So that was really, I was like, what? Like, that was just mind blowing for me that there's that sort of really very deep and obscure connection to DNA to butterflies. connection. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> 
When you're um, getting dressed, do you always start with your shoes and then work around that? Um, it depends what I'm getting dressed for. So if it's for like an event or something, then yeah, I will always choose um, which shoes I've got. Like there will usually be something that's in the current collection or something I've been just waiting to to arrive. And so um, yeah, I'll definitely start with the shoes and then and then work up. What projects are you most excited about at the moment? Um, well, th just this week I launched uh, LOL Doll. Do you know LOL Dolls? Yes, 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 yes. I saw that on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, so that's been really fun because all my girls have been really excited about it. So I got to um, design my own um, LOL Doll and I did a whole collection of shoes to go to go with her. And Mama how did Minnie. that come about? Um, I it was a it was on my like wish list for such a long time because I've bought so many LOL dolls <laughs> in the last like nine years for, uh, for, your for my daughters. daughters yeah um and um and I just love them they're so cute and you know they're they're so fun and they're prints and colors and they've got such they're really sassy and they have little phrases with their names and everything so um it definitely felt like it was a good a good uh, match um, and then before COVID, they reached out to um, do, they were doing like a, I think a bigger project with different designers. And then that, um, that didn't happen because of COVID. And then afterwards, um, we got back in touch again. And then um, I got to do my own doll. So that was really good. Yeah. You, you mentioned on your sort of wish list, do you, do you have a sort of vision board or yeah. anything like that? You do. Yeah. I've had so, I've had lots of different things on there and it, it, it's quite, um, crazy how, how many of them have come to fruition. You've manifested. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how do you go about your vision board? Um, it's quite funny. So my um, graphic um, designer at work, Sophie, she'll like Photoshop me into all these different. <laughs> she'll like will like Photoshop celebrities in shoes and different things. But will you say? Will you say to her, "I want to, you know, I want to see this celebrity or this royal wearing this shoe." Yeah, they'll def they'll just be different conversations that sort of come up, and then there'll be funny ones on there as well that, um, you know, just 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 fun but um most a lot of the celebrities that you know we really want this to happen and then yeah you've yeah, had you've had some extraordinary ones from yeah it's Beyonce to JLo to I mean yeah the rest is history mm -hmm. <laughs> have you have you has Madonna had anything oh Madonna did wear a, a really cool pair actually of of bright pink satin um like ankle boots with like a diamante ankle ankle strap because i'm they're just really looking cool. at these absolute joyous <laughs> yeah, creations they're, here they're very madonna thinking, yeah they're really really madonna aren't they yeah yeah but let's go back to you as you were growing up were you very aware of your mother's style yeah i would say my, the biggest influence was my nanny peggy um my mum's mum just because she was very glam so she um would always have like fluffy slippers on and she she worked in um she left school when she was 14 and she worked in Freeman Hardy Willis you know yeah, the, like yeah, shoe. shoe manufacturers and um shoe shop she was on the shop floor and so she thought she was like a leather and shoe expert <laughs> so, mm. so she would always have um have strong opinions about about shoes and um and yeah she just was very she just always um had different tips and tricks for you know she put like egg yolks on her hair and we'd make perfume out of rose petals and different things so she was just really lovely and she she had the most amazing style she would always um wear very glittery things <laughs> even if it was just around the house do you have a clear memory of the moment that you tried something on, or maybe it was even a pair of shoes that that really you felt fantastic in? I was probably maybe 11, 10, 10 or 11. And um, for Christmas, my mum took me and my sister to uh, Covent Garden to the Buffalo shoe shop. And I got a pair of the Spice Girl, like Buffalo boots. Yes. And I remember thinking, I. Oh, 
oh, I've, I've really made it now. <laughs> oh, know? fantastic. What colour were they? Um, I had a baby blue pair. Of yeah, course. baby blue and white. It were, they were really cute. Yeah, In fact, I wore them to death. Yeah. <laughs> they were threadbare by the end. <laughs> Pounds per wear, that's good. Um, did they do them in pink? They did, but pink, I wasn't, I don't think pink, I wasn't like hugely into pink maybe when I was really young. I always liked it, but pink was, um, I don't, yeah, I couldn't, I can't pinpoint when I, when I started to sort of really like pink things, but um, back then it was like more pastels, I think, yeah. Is there an awful lot of pink in your wardrobe? Yeah, there's lots of pink, yeah. <laughs> Um, in your book, you talk about the influence of watching television as you were yeah. growing up in the 90s. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I would watch um, like Nickelodeon and there was a UK version of, of Nickelodeon called Trouble, which I used to watch a lot of. Um, and I loved like the American shows and the fashions um, in them, like Sister Sister um, and... Uh, there was one called Moesha and they would have like in sister sister there were these like floppy hats and um it would mean this and the mini little cardigans and cropped crop cardies and things like that but it's very almost very now as well that style it's and did you find yourself mimicking those styles going out to boutiques or charity shops or um yeah i mean i would probably go and look at my big sister's wardrobe, <laughs> then, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I was, we didn't do like a huge amount of like, shopping, but I would um, definitely try and fashion or adapt things so that I was... Was she a bit of an icon that look. for you? Um, yeah, she, well, she worked it when she was a teenager. She worked in Gap um, that had just opened in Blue Water, which was yeah. a shopping centre near us. Um, so she would always have really cool outfits on and she had really nice shoes and I broke a pair once that I like hid and then it was a really big drama when we was when she found because you'd borrowed them <laughs> mm, borrowed <laughs> borrowed okay <laughs> um I know you love you've talked about your love of um butterfly prints but you also love animal prints yeah where do you think that came from I definitely think probably originated with the Spice Girls, with um, Scary Spice. With all the leopard. Yeah, leopard. And then also there was a programme that I used to watch when I was really small called um, Gem and the Holograms. And they had a lot of different... Um, she, well, Gem was... was um, she was a pop star. Who, she turned into a pop star when she pressed her like magic star earrings. Um, so she was, her band was very pink and um, very 80s fashions, pinks, polka dots, polka dots, sorry, lace, pastels. But then there was a rival band called the Misfits and that was zebra print and um, very sort of lurid, mismatched colours. So I definitely got a huge amount of was, colour inspiration from that show. I was going to say, it's almost like you fused those yes, two definitely. Sh shows into <laughs> Sophia Webster. I think I have, yeah. It's very direct sometimes. Of when I, But that's what I mean when I was going through the sketches and in my head I was connecting them to things in my past and it was all starting to kind of make sense. Can we talk about your disco dancing years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you used to dance as a real hobby. Yeah, yeah. So we did um, competitive freestyle disco dancing, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And what did you wear for that? W well, you wear... Um, the cost The dancing costumes are very... They're, like, highly embellished. Um, and they're, like, a body... I guess, like, a big sort of... Um, body stocking. Bod body stocking, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they were very, very expensive. So you would only get like one a year and you had to like make it last um, and take really good care of it. And um, But we would always have a lot of fun like planning and picking the colours. And my dad actually taught himself how to sew sequins on. And, Is they really and, technical things yeah, to make, aren't they? Yeah, and you would when you would dance at competition, you'd lose a few rhinestones and sequins, so you had to repair them. So we had the Swarovski colour card at home from when I was really quite small. So all of those sorts of 
sequins and embellishments and crystals that's definitely been something I've been super aware of and thinking about from yeah. from when I was quite young and what shoes did you wear with your body stockings oh you don't it's barefoot is it yeah yeah I bet you were... A, a, so I didn't have to worry about the shoes because that would have been a whole other thing to have to plan in. But then you were a keen raver. Yeah. So disco dancing to rave, that's quite... Uh, well, it was garage, so garage is slightly different. You, have, you but, get dressed up. And, yes, yeah. but what would you wear for that? Um, Certainly not your disco dancing oh no, body no. suits. I don't think you could wear them anywhere other than on a disco <laughs> dancing dance them? floor. I think my mum's got them in her loft, yeah. She says she's going to get them down because she thinks like the, my daughters would like to wear them. Oh, the kids would love them, them yeah. surely. Yeah. Um, but so, garage. Garage, yeah. What were you wearing? There was quite a dress code, really, with, with garage. It was, But it was all kind of labels and, and I... Um, I couldn't afford a lot of it at that time. So, um, and I would just borrow my my friend's clothes and stuff because I was quite lucky because I was only, um, my sister was into garage and she's two years older than me. So she um, went on holiday to Ayanapa, which is the, where all garage ravers would go for your summer holiday. And um, my mum and dad were going on holiday and my sister didn't come back from Ayanapa. So she stayed out there to work. So then they said, oh, well, we don't want to leave you in the house on your own. So you can go and spend, like you can go to Cyprus for a week. But then I didn't come back either. So, <laughs> so but it was quite lucky because I would only just turned 17 and I got to go to, to Ayanapa. Um, and share your sister's fantastic wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she'd made friends with these two girls who I'm still, um, still my best friends today. And they, everyone had like the best, the best clothes. And, and they all wore Patrick Cox loafers as well. So that the the wannabes. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I did a collaboration with Patrick Cox because to me he was just like. I mean, you talk so passionately about your shoes and and then sort of the evolution into jewelry. Mm -hmm. um, would you have you ever been tempted to go into ready to wear? I'd never say never. I mean, I did do some clothes when I did my collection with Puma. So that, but that was more sort of sportswear and athleisure. Um, I did love for the Fashion Week shows, creating the looks to go with the shoes. Mm. And may maybe one day, but at the minute I'm kept very busy just with the, I, <laughs> just I, with the shoes. I would think so. Um, I have to ask you, heel height. Mm -hmm. What, in your opinion, is the sexiest height for a heel? I would say 100 millimetres. That's the highest that we go. I think other brands go up to like 120, which but, I would do on a platform, but not on a yeah, single side. But 100, you can walk well in, can't you, without yeah. teetering? Yeah, I, I do think, I mean, we do a lot more mid heights now um, and flats. I think 85 and is is sexy, but then I, I, I love designing mid heights as well. They're a bit more of a challenge. I was going to say, I've always thought that that mid height is such an area of the market with huge demand mm. because everyone wants to be in that sort of slightly less yeah. um, challenging height. Yeah. But how do you do it so it's, it retains its sexiness? Well, I think you have to play with like the top lines and where you, where you put the details and, and different things. It's definitely a fine balance and... It's a lot more complicated um, to 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 make it very very appealing. Yeah, it's definitely becoming like a a huge part of of the market, and there's yeah. huge demand for it. Yeah. So um, it's not very well serviced, actually. That part of the market. Yeah. So we're doing. I mean, I think my collection, got, my next collection is there's there's lo there's more mid heights than we've ever ever done before. Um, but I do wear. I myself wear mid heights. When you're designing, do you do you have a bit of a designing uniform? Is the the, the clothes that you reach for again and again just because you're going to go into the studio and not get distracted by other business stuff? You're yeah. gonna you're gonna be in Sophia design mode. 
I'm quite chaotic in, in the, the way I get dressed in the morning. <laughs> Not, I don't really plan it out. So, so are you a, a mood dresser, a proper mood dresser? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and is it, do you, do you reach for colour or do you reach for silhouette first, do you think? Oh, definitely colour, yeah. Do you think you've ever used clothes to fit in? Growing up, I don't think I really had like my own style. I would I would emulate the style of people that I um, I was like obsessed with at the time. Mm. Let's say mm. whether that's like Gwen Stefani. I loved Gwen Stefani growing up, so I would try and I don't know. I'd like bleach my hair and try and wear Doc Martens and um, crop tops with like baggy trousers and things or. Mm. So I went from like Spice Girls to <laughs> Gwen Stefani. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it was only really as I started, when I had my first job really, where I could sort of start buying, you know, um, things that I really liked. And when do you, is that when you felt <clears throat> that you really discovered your style DNA? Personal style, yeah. Yes. But the style for, for things that... Um, you know, things that I could gravitate towards or in inspirations, that's always colour and vibrant things and prints and patterns. Fundamentally, who do you think you dress for? Definitely myself. <laughs> healthy, healthy. <laughs> do you have a power shoe? Yeah, I do actually. And what, what is it? Tell me. Uh, my... my um, Baby pink um, patent boss lady pumps. Yeah, they're my... Love that. Which actually my... brings me on to the next point. Um, I, I often talk about clothes as being our armour. Um, and I know that you've taken on investment into the business, business and you have to attend board meetings now. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a boardroom look that you feel empowers you to deal with those meetings? No, I just wear whatever I've got on that day. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so confident. It's wonderful. <laughs> Would you say you've got any particular standout outfits of your life? Oh yeah, my I love my wedding dress. That was that was really cute. Tell me about it. Um. So my wedding, the whole wedding was like really last minute. So even though we'd had it planned in, we were just so busy with the business that. Um, the venue actually rang us up like three weeks before the date and just to check that we were still engaged. <laughs> and then they were like, okay, guys, you need to come in because you're having a wedding and we don't know what you want, like what's happening. And the place that I'd booked had no um, no catering or bar or anything. So everything we had to bring everything in. It was like a, a old car garage in um, Dalston but it's really it's really really nice um uh space and um so I had started working on my I'd started thinking about my dress and one of my friends from um the Royal College of Art um Morton he made he made it for me but he didn't live in the UK so we kept shipping the toile back and forth don't make it easy <laughs> on yourself <laughs> but then he came to London one weekend and we, he met me at the studio and he went to my house to fit it, but he left the dress on the train. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. So and then, how many weeks before the wedding was this? It's probably maybe a, maybe a month, five weeks before, something like that. And um, so we had to tra chase the train in a black cab. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then um, my um, friend Kathleen, who works with me, we went to college together. She's still, she, we've worked together for, like, nearly 20 years I think it is now um she um she sent the dress back to Morton and I sent the email to her with the address on it but she accidentally sent it to the address of his bank oh for goodness so sake <laughs> so then the dress ended up in the bank <laughs> but not like fortunately the bank rang Morton and said oh we've had a mysterious package arrive for you um but then eventually I got the dress and then he was still um embellishing we had like we decided to put sequin polka dots on the on the mesh there was like a mesh over a mini skirt it was a mini dress with a mesh overlay but then we decided to put um sequin polka dots on the on the mesh part like maybe a day or two before the actual wedding so he was 
<laughs> like sewing it. But then when it, when was it the dress? Out, when was it finished? I think it was finished like six o'clock in the morning <laughs> on my wedding day. <laughs> and what was the top of it like? Um, it was just it was it was it had like an open back, but it was quite. Um, it was quite formal, I'd say, the top. It wasn't low cut or anything. I wore like a big um, necklace. Uh, they used, there was a designer called Tom Bins. He was quite yeah. big at the time. Yeah. He used to do these amazing necklaces. So I had one that was like crystal and baby pink gems. So that was really cool. Have you ever worn it again? The necklace? Uh, no, the dress. Oh, uh, no, no. No. I think we used it for a shoot, maybe. For a bridal shoot, but I've not. But you've got several daughters, so. I do, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it is um, put away somewhere safely. Yeah, it is, it is. Um, if someone were to describe your style DNA in three words, mm -hmm. how, what three words would you want those to be? I would say eclectic, colourful and um, individual like that I like that is being stylish important to you I think that is very connected to like mood so it's important in the way that I like to dress to to feel happy you know and that definitely has an effect on 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 me I think there's certain um things in my wardrobe that I'll gravitate to if I want a bit of a boost that day have you always had long hair I haven't always had long hair. Actually, when I was young, I had this really horrific hair style. <laughs> <laughs> what was said horrific? I have, I have this um, clear memory of my mum taking me to the hairdressers with a picture cut out from the paper of Anthea Turner. <laughs> no offence to Anthea Turner. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when she had that feathered sort of bob, which yep. looks amazing on her on um you know a grown woman but on like a six-year-old child it wasn't a look <laughs> and I, yeah so so I had this awful bob which everyone remembers me for is they used to call me like pineapple head at school because I would wear like some of it in a in a little top knot so basically I just that's why I have long hair I think because I'm just I'm quite scarred by that hairstyle yeah oh, and <laughs> <laughs> what you hated it so much you literally piled it up on top of your head well as much as I as much as that would fit into a top knot I would put into a top knot <laughs> have you have you ever chopped it off since I did yeah I chopped it off twice um for charity for God, the tell um, me about that. princess trust so it my hair was really really long um it'd grown super long and then when I was pregnant with my twins I I cut it off um I cut like a lot off for charity it's just it's a good thing to do if you're having a, a um if you're going for the chop you know you just put it into like a few little ponytails and then you can send it off and they make a wig um amazing yeah and you've done that twice yeah I did that twice wow because when I was pregnant with um my daughters my hair seemed to just grow super super long and fast yeah and then they they take it. It's taken to wig makers. Yeah, yeah. How lovely. Yeah, my How daughter, lovely. my eldest daughter, did it as well. She oh, she went wow. for like a, a real chop. Yeah, but Amazing. she always wants shorter hair, and I'm just I think <laughs> I'm like, no, baby, you want long hair. And she's like, no, I want it shorter. So, um, yeah, I just I just let them I let them do what they do do what they want really. Do um, they have opinions on your style? It's quite funny because where I, I wear lots of colourful clothes and the most compliments that I get for my style and clothes is in the infant's playground from, like, the other kids. <laughs> They're like, oh, Bibi's mummy, I love your coat. Bibi's mummy, I love your, your T-shirt. I'm like, oh, great, thanks. <laughs> do, you, do you think you have a style icon? Not, not one currently that springs to mind. In the past, definitely, like, with... So you had Gwen Stefani. Gwen Stefani, yeah, yeah Spice Girls. Um, I loved Paris Hilton as well. <laughs> <laughs> when they did like The Simple Life, that was such a, you know, I just think she, her style was pretty iconic in the noughties. Mm. So, yeah. And would you say your um, style has changed through the decades? I'm probably now a bit tamer than I than I would have been um, maybe the last decade. I don't know, just in the, just 
the need to be a bit more practical, I think, being a being a mom of four. Yeah, I was going to say, because you have an incredibly busy life. You know, mm-hmm. you're a mother, you're designing, you're traveling, either production or promotion or whatever. Are you phenomenally well organized in your wardrobe? Oh, no. no. <laughs> I'm ADHD, so I'm, it's absolute chaos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do um, you... Packing is all is is hell for me. I was going to say yeah. with packing, do mm. you just take well, I just too get much so luggage? Distracted. I'm like packing one thing, and then I'm like, oh, that's nice, and and then I'm, um, oh, it honestly, it takes it takes forever. I don't have a system. I, I was going to say, do you have a system for no. it, like taking photos of outfits? Oh, no. and I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just every just like now and then, <laughs> every now and then, when you put together a good look, just snap a picture That's such of a good it idea. and create an yeah. album on your mm. phone. <laughs> yeah, finding that in it would be would be a start. Well, that, that top that I wore once, you know, is is oh that is good? Tough. Yeah. <laughs> would you say you've got a desert island shoe? Probably the um, I did these speech bubble shoes. So I started off doing speech bubble clutch bags, and they they did quite well. And then I put them on to shoes, and I did one that said Queen Bee. And in my head, I was like willing for Beyonce to wear them. And then um, then I got a message from her stylist, like requesting a pair, and we sent them to her. And you never know whether people, whether celebrities will or won't yeah. wear things. And then when I saw her wearing them, that was just, that was such an amazing moment for, for us, for the whole team. And we, I remember we, um, we did like a conga around the office. That's and brilliant. the office downstairs thought that <laughs> there was like a rat or something. They were like, you okay? Are you being robbed? We're like, no, we're fine. We just, Beyonce's got our shoes on. Oh, amazing. Yeah, so I'd probably take them because that was... That for me was such an amazing, amazing moment. Yeah. Do you have an archive of every single style that you've ever designed? Um, not every single style. We we did. I did used to um, archive a lot, but then we just did a big clear out recently because I don't need to keep everything. I just want to keep the ones the best that bits. are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who do you most tr- trust to give you an opinion on your style when you're not a hundred percent sure of it? Yeah, maybe my daughters actually. <laughs> yeah, I always like to get their opinion. That's probably why you're my so eldest popular is very honest. In yeah, the, in the playground. <laughs> my husband usually just wants to get us out the door. So, <laughs> <laughs> would you consider that you have had a worst fashion moment? I did my first ever like live Q and A at a fashions night out um, in Manchester. I think it was in Manchester. And I had to be honest, what I had on was really was was cute. It was like this uh, mini skirt that matched with a t-shirt. But then I had to give a talk on these on a stool, like perched <laughs> on a stool. And uh, halfway through, a lady in the audience. It was really busy, so I was probably like two hundred people there watching, watching. And this lady went, "We can see your knickers." That is so <laughs> northern, so northern. And I was like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like mortified and I think I squeezed my legs together so hard I got cramped and then I'm like trying to give an interview like burning coughs yeah oh my goodness do you have a high street favorite I mean I love ASOS and I love River Island (laughs) I did a collection with them when I was at college Mm. so um and I loved River Island when I was younger because they always had like things that were a bit more quirky you know than Topshop was a bit more basic, I think, but River Island had, they they used to push the boundaries a bit more, let's say. And do you buy vintage at all? Yeah, I love, I love, um, I'm always on like Vinted or Etsy and um, eBay, yeah. And do you tend to buy your vintage online or do you go out? I don't, I don't do, I don't ever do like physical shopping. I'm always, I buy everything online. And in terms of shoe research, is that literally, do you, is all your creativity, does all your creativity come from within yourself or do you ever look at vintage shoes? I think sometimes, sometimes I would look at vintage, at vintage shoes. Um, I went to the, one of the best places I've ever been in my whole life is the Barter Shoe Museum in Canada. And the curator there took me into the archives. They have the biggest collection of archive shoes in the world and that was un believable that was that was like heaven was that were the specific 
styles that you found yourself sketching? <clears throat> Mostly just like the vintage, like Roger Vivier. Did, did it inspire a collection out of interest, that visit? I think it inspired lots of things. I mm. always flick back to the those pictures on my phone. It was years ago, yeah. but there's the, shoes in the past were, were they were made so differently. The, the there was such an amazing like finesse and attention to detail in a in like a vintage um, shoe that they just I don't even know if there'd be a factory that could even replicate that these days. Do you think that was because they were? designed and made with more longevity in mind rather than a slightly more throwaway society that we live in. And I'm not saying that your shoes by any stroke of the imagination throwaway because they are little works of art. <laughs> but you. but do you think it was because people tended to hang on to their their clothes and their shoes longer? Oh yeah, I definitely don't think they would have had the same um pressure of like newness that we have mm. that we have now mm. um so yeah I definitely they think they would be made with 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 that in mind and they're all so much smaller as well they're tiny yeah, aren't they? yeah. what's happened to our feet we've just got I I think it's because we wear just loads of sneakers and Birkenstocks and all the rest you of it and so? our feet just spread <laughs> <laughs> um what, if anything, do you think you've got an excessive amount of in your wardrobe? Jeans. I have a lot of jeans, yeah. Who's, whose jeans do you particularly love? Um, to be fair, I usually just get like Levi's because um, I'm really petite, so I don't fit in a lot of jeans. I have to have a very like specific waist-leg ratio. Just coming on to values, what is your approach to sustainable fashion? Definitely as... Um, the more I did, the more collections I created and things like that, we were accruing a lot of um, excess materials and things like that. And then I did think, you know, I want to make what we do a bit more circular. So then that's when I started introducing the upcycled collections that I do. So um, I think eventually we'll probably get to a point where we don't even need to do them, I'm hoping, because we will you know, we, we work it and we work so differently now to how we worked. What what do you mean by the upcycled collections? Okay, so um I I think it was maybe in two thousand and eighteen I introduced um a um category that was upcycled shoes. So we would use our excess materials that the, the factory sends me, basically, you've got X amount of this material, that material. So they will send me what we've got left over. And then I will I, um, create new shoes from the leftover materials. What would you say is the oldest piece in your wardrobe? Oh, I've got t-shirts from when I was like a teenager that I just can't get rid of. <laughs> right, let's turn to some <laughs> quick fire questions. What fashion advice would you give to your 20 year old self? Oh, I had this gold rockerwear puffer jacket that had zip off sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell myself that that jacket did not look good. <laughs> it was not a good idea. <laughs> what fashion or beauty trend would you consign to room 101? <laughs> um, maybe like over plucking your eyebrows I've got some horrific photos from when I was a teenager like oh, really a... skinny eyebrows that started about here <laughs> you're lucky they've grown back what was your last impulse by probably these trousers <laughs> your views on tattoos I like tattoos but I don't have any yeah beauty treatment you couldn't give up get my roots done <laughs> High end or high street? A bit of both, I think. Yeah, high bling. low. <laughs> bling or bear? Bling. <laughs> Minimalism or maximalism? Oh, maximalism. Couture sure. or charity shop? Um, a bit. Again, a bit of both. <laughs> Crocs, cute or puke? I like Crocs. Yeah, cute. <laughs> Sneakers or stilettos? I'm going to go stilettos. Yeah. Skinnies, boyfriends or wide legs? Wide legs. Bodycon or boho? Bodycon. Sports Lux or Rock Chick? 
Sports Lux. Trend or style? Style. Colour or monochrome? Colour. <laughs> Experimental or uniform? Experimental. Cashmere or cotton? Cashmere, I think, yeah. Hoarder or editor? I'm a hoarder, <laughs> but I really want to be an <laughs> I'd really like to be a minimalist. <laughs> I'm a hoarder with minimalist dreams. <laughs> Charity shop or resale? Charity shop. Shapewear or sexy lingerie? <laughs> Granny pants. <laughs> Tights or stockings? Tights. Bikini or one piece? Bikini. Beanie or berry? Beanie. And finally... At the end of the day, what do you or don't you wear in bed? I don't wear anything in bed, no. <laughs> Sophia, what fun to spend this afternoon with you. Thank you for being here and sharing your style journey with me. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been fun. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure. It really is. Thank you.